Hello everyone. So I will uh, show a bit uh, one tool we have created uh, to uh, model air quality in Estonia. Uh, with the background first, uh, uh, why to model uh, air quality? The uh, uh, reason for that is that is uh, to make measurements. Uh, it's uh, pretty uh, complex and uh, usually also very expensive. Um, and of course the measurements only give uh, like snapshot of a certain location. Uh, and uh, for some, uh, some, uh, some substances, uh, the measurement can be really difficult. Uh, and uh, so it's quite widely uh, used uh, different uh, mathematical uh, algorithms which, which uh, mimic uh, the dispersion of uh, pollutants in the atmosphere. So, so uh, <coughs> and also models uh, allow us to uh, play uh, different what-if scenarios and also extend uh, this uh, air quality assessment uh, especially on the map and also temporarily in time, uh, either in future or, uh, or, uh, or in past. So this special modeling, what it is, uh, it's uh, more or less combining uh, different inputs uh, like to topography, uh, meteorology of course, uh, which is the main driver of the dispersion of pollutants uh, and then uh, emissions uh, like stacks, uh, chimneys, uh, so on. Uh, and, uh, Using uh, certain formulas, uh, it will calculate the uh, concentration of uh, pollutants in the atmosphere. And actually, to simplify it, it's uh, pretty similar to ballistics. Uh, if you throw something into air uh, and uh, you know the initial conditions, uh, then you can calculate uh, where it drops. Uh, so it's similar with uh, those pollutants, uh, but uh, only, of course, those variables and uh, also the algorithms are a bit different. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, when you model anything, uh, it's, there's a lot of uncertainties. Uh, and, uh, like, uh, input data, which is necessary for, uh, to model. Uh, emission data, which means like, those pollution sources and uh, how much the pollution is coming out from them in time. Meteorology, either to use uh, certain meteorological mass data or uh, input from meteorological model, like HIRLAM or other models. Uh, and of course, then topography, how accurately you uh, describe your topography. And of course, the models itself can be also pretty different, uh, very different type of models are used. And uh, when using uh, models uh, in assessment, like um, environmental impact assessment or uh, for the pollution permits, um, then of course, uh, using different models uh, produces different results. Uh, and uh, it's uh, never ending arguing uh, which uh, result is uh, correct and which not. Uh, so in, uh, in quite many countries, uh, the government has uh, specified some kind of regulatory model, uh, like standard model, uh, just, just to avoid this kind of uh, discussion uh, of uh, which model is right. Um, so they're specifying certain models, uh, and uh, it is ensured that the same data sets are used uh, to modeling, uh, and uh, also, all the results and uh, metadata which were used uh, for modeling uh, should also be kept. Uh, so it's uh, possible to track down uh, how, how this uh, result was obtained, uh, not use the model as a black box only. So in Estonia, uh, we're using uh, AirWire software uh, to model uh, air quality. And uh, the system itself uh, contains uh, different models, uh, currently nine different air quality models. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, this uh, is very, very powerful, uh, powerful software. Um, but uh, as you all, all know, uh, like uh, like also like Arcis, it's very powerful, but it's also very complex to use. Uh, and same is with AirWire. So, for the regular users, uh, it's time to time uh, too difficult uh, to understand uh, what parameters to use and so on. Uh, and uh, for that, that uh, purpose, we uh, we created a web service. Uh, for the AirViro, so it's possible uh, from uh, other systems to uh, run the models uh, using a simplified, uh, simplified web service um, and also the make a queries to the emission databases uh, we are keeping in AirViro software. <coughs> so this actually ensures that uh, the users who, uh, who run those models are using the exactly the same, uh, same input data, same methodology, same topography. So how it works? Um, the web interface was created using S3 web application and uh, emission databases. Uh, 
those, those are the data, the data of these uh, stacks and, uh, and different other emissions um, uh, queried from Airviro EDBs, emission databases uh, over web service uh, using JSON. And, uh, and Airviro sends uh, those uh, source data back to this uh, web application. Um, and uh, also in web application, you can send, select uh, certain sources and send them back to Airviro to make the calculations. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, Airviro do, runs the model, dispersion model, produces result, and the web application is pulling uh, this result. So, and uh, it's possible to uh, visualize uh, these results on the map in this, uh, in this uh, web application. We'll show a couple of screenshots. Uh, and if you have time, then also show it in live. So more or less, it's uh, it's regular uh, regular this web application. Um, user user can uh, select different uh, different uh, emission databases. Uh, from here, on the drop down menu, uh, the different data sets like uh, pollution permits, uh, these are the official ones, and also then uh, for each year, this is like. Uh, so certain year uh, actual emissions which uh, enterprises have reported to the state, um, so the user can select uh, any of those uh, databases. Um, those databases are kept in Airviro and then this, this uh, system makes the query. Um, it's just, uh, just uh, from this 2015 uh, database, uh, there's uh, all those uh, pollution permits are uh, shown, uh, which are issued in Estonia for that year, uh, that particular year. And then, of course, uh, user can select uh, those uh, those uh, enterprises um, which have uh, pollution permits. Uh, highlight uh, them. Uh, there. Pointer. Over here. And then, uh, if you select uh, any of those uh, enterprises, uh, if it shows. Uh, shows uh, the pollution sources which are related to this enterprise. Uh, for example, there is some, uh, some agricultural activity, there is uh, like barns or menu storage. Uh, they are like different uh, sources uh, from where the pollut pollutants uh, go the, into the atmosphere. Of course, uh, it's possible to, uh, to export uh, this data to a shape file uh, in order to use in the other systems or uh, in your, on your maps. Um, and, uh, and also the boundaries of the of those uh, enterprises who have pollution permits are highlighted also on the map. Uh, so officially, there's uh, air quality uh, air quality limit values should be uh, met uh, on the border boundaries uh, outside of the boundary. And of course, uh, the data data of the pollution sources uh, here is uh, some stack uh, or ventilation, uh, and it's. Uh, there is data related to this, uh, this uh, pollution source. Um, and also then you can also uh, look uh, different uh, pollutants, substances, uh, to qu query from the, those databases uh, for certain uh, pollutants. Uh, there's a drop-down list uh, specified uh, those pollutants uh, in Estonia, unfortunately. But anyway, it's like uh, nitrogen dioxide, uh, sulfur dioxide, and so on. Uh, So here is uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, from uh, this data set, uh, and it, uh, it shows those, uh, those uh, pollution sources uh, on, on the map. Um, and uh, of course, uh, these, uh, these results are uh, ex ex extracted from here, but also the, it's possible to uh, use uh, those existing sources as, uh, as input to the dispersion model. Uh, so user can select certain sources, for example, here. There's a list, list there, those sources, um, and uh, there's a button that uh, use, use this as input uh, in the model. Uh, by by, uh, by uh, clicking, clicking that, uh, it will open this version model tab uh, where those uh, sources are sent over there. So user can either uh, run straight away uh, calculation uh, to calculate the impact of those sources uh, to their quality or also manually add uh, some new sources. Uh, for example, if there's uh, some existing uh, enterprise and they want to uh, add one, 
one of facility or new ventilation or something, uh, then uh, to play, play, play around that uh, what will be the impact to the air quality, then they can add this uh, virtual source and uh, play with it, uh, play with the height of the source uh, and see uh, when this uh, limit values, uh, air quality limit values are met. Um, so it's this modern, modern tab. Here is uh, the selected sources over there, and, uh, and also you can uh, manually then insert new new sources or, or new sources. Uh. Send them to model to the Airviro. In Airviro, in the, this, this example, the Gaussian model uh, is started uh, with uh, this input data. And uh, if, if you do, do those calculations uh, inside the Airviro, then of course you have to select uh, the certain area specify the dispersion, uh, the this modeling grid, uh, because of course, uh, if, if you do the modeling, then uh, mo model calculates uh, results for certain points, uh, so like the net uh, grid, grid um, and, uh, and uh, user usually have to set it, uh, but uh, in, in case of this uh, simplified tool, uh, those, um, those parameters are already, uh, or default parameters are specified by us, uh, so user don't have to, do, have to know about the uh, modeling too much and uh, then just um, click and run the model um, and they will get a nice picture. Of course they can zoom in, click on this, uh, this, uh, this polygons uh, to show uh, the concentration of the pollutants. Uh, this example is, uh, oh shit, sorry, this uh, particulate matter um, and there is a limit value, 500 uh, is how the limit value in Estonia and uh, for this uh, particular calculation, then of course uh, those uh, levels are much lower uh, than limit value. And of course user can then uh, can use, uh, can take out this, uh, this uh, shapefile to use it in other systems. And, and uh, yes, uh, and, uh, and the user can, uh, can see all those uh, calculations uh, which is done by him because this same system uses the same uh, credentials as, as Airviro, and all those uh, results um, are kept in, in Airviro, so anyone can later on check. For example, if some uh, environmental expert is uh, doing some modeling using this tool and presenting this data to environmental authorities, and then environmental authorities, if they want, they can actually run the model again or check the input data. And, uh, so, so all, all this process is uh, transparent, uh, and all those uh, input data are kept uh, in the in the Airviro. So uh, users can uh, query uh, national emission databases uh, using this simplified map infor interface. Uh, so it's uh, much more intuitive and, uh, and easier to use than this uh, actual software. We're using, uh, like, uh, experts are using on uh, every day, uh, but uh, it is a more, uh, more robust uh, way to do these calculations. Um, and all those variables are predefined, uh, which the user don't have to know exactly. Uh, but uh, it's the same for all, all, uh, all these users, uh, if they run the models uh, using this, uh, this tool. Um. So, uh, we can run the models either using predefined parameters or, uh, or uh, add new ones uh, to play the, the different scenarios. Um, and yes, as I all said, uh, this uh, process is uh, transparent and, uh, and uh, track down those calculations so it's possible now. Uh, and of course, it's uh, free of charge, uh, so people can use it. Um, I, I will show also this um, on live. So it looks like that. So here is like facilities, uh, then pollution sources, uh, and model. For example, I choose uh, facilities, um, take this, some database, uh, I can zoom in also, maybe Tallinn, for example, and so on map. So um, now it um, takes this extent that makes a query to the, to the database, uh, National Emission Database, so those are all the enterprises. Zoom in and look them. And as I said, those are boundaries are also highlighted. 
the territories. Uh, and of course, you can choose some of them. Uh, there's the name of this facility, and if you click on the facilities, then it shows also the, the pollution source, which is uh, related to that particular facility. Uh. In current example, okay, this, this one has uh, four, four, five, uh, five sources. Um. And if I click, click on source, uh, then it will really shows the data for that source. Uh. Then also I can go to this uh, pollution sources. Uh. But in, the, in that case, uh, I also need to uh, choose uh, what, kind, what uh, substance I want to see. Uh. For example, I can check uh, for this area, is, uh, there is was, uh, 2015 reported uh, sulfur dioxide. Uh. Let's check. No. Let's put the whole tile in. Okay, there is something. So, so we can look at the emissions so, so on. And also, you can uh, select those sources. Uh, two, two, two sources uh, here. And I can then use in, in model. So those sources are now here. And here is also possible to uh, choose different models, uh, three models currently. Gaussian model, Eulerian model, and, uh, and Lagrangian, are different type of models. Uh, and also there are different uh, sim types. Uh, is it scenario run where the meteorology is already pre-processed? Uh, or time series where this uh, takes a full, full meteorological year? But it's a detail, so it's probably very interesting for you. But anyway, then I can press the calculate, and, uh, and if everything works, then it sends it to Airviro. Airviro starts to calculate. So if I log into the Airviro, actually, you can see that the model is running. Uh, and uh, when, uh, when this result is ready, then I can click on it, and it will open it. I can just look some earlier results. Uh. OK. There is uh, some run for uh, nitrogen dioxide. Uh, for uh, for uh, for Yuma, okay. And then user can of course click on the map uh, and look uh, is this uh, limit values uh, met or not. Uh. So it's, it is it is tool for environmental experts or this uh, environmental authorities. Uh. Okay. It's still running, probably. And of course, it, uh, it has uh, all those uh, typical uh, web application uh, tools here available to switch on the different uh, base maps and, uh, and so on. Uh, let's, uh, make bookmarks uh, and different, different those. Uh, no, this, this one you probably know, all those two tools. Uh, Okay, I will come back to the slides. And uh, this, this, uh, this tool is not uh, completely finished yet uh, because uh, we do, don't have yet uh, traffic data over there. Of course, we have uh, traffic uh, databases in our uh, main modeling system in Airviro, but uh, the further plan is also to bring this, uh, this traffic data on this, this map uh, and also the residential eating. Actually, this residential eating we can uh, bring here already now, but uh, the problem is that um, this database for residential eating is uh, based on um, this building register in Estonia. So each, each, uh, each house which has a stove is uh, treated as a separate source. And of course, uh, if you look uh, some big city, then it's, uh, the number of these uh, houses or sources uh, per city is like uh, tens of thousands. So it's, uh, pretty heavy calculations. So if I run the model uh, for, uh, for example, some uh, district in Tallinn uh, to, to, uh, to calculate the impact of uh, those uh, wood, wood burning uh, for the air quality, and then these uh, calculations will take a long time uh, and will uh, we'll put a pretty heavy load on our server. And uh, this, this web service uh, to this uh, modeling system is also used uh, in our uh, National Air Pollution Permit System, which is uh, in development uh, by the board. Um, 
and there is idea just that if you run the model, it will automatically then check is this limit values exceeded or not outside of the boundaries of the enterprise, just automatically to automate this 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 process a bit. Okay, and thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, please answer. Question. Is it possible in the system to read many models from different pollutants and see how it's saying one thirty, how it's overlapping, and to see a sum up from which one? So you mean like the diff different substances? Uh? Different substances and also to see how it's like overlapping? Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, in, 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 uh, usually it's uh, run always uh, sub one substance uh, in time. But of course, it's uh, in, in air where it's possible to. Uh, Combine those uh, these results. It is possible, but uh, not not uh, in this simplified tool. Uh. But uh, in theory, yes, uh, it's possible as well here as well. Uh, but uh, but uh, I'm not sure uh, how to use it. Uh, what to do with that? Uh. But yes, uh, it's possible uh, because uh, if if we do the modeling, then of course uh, we usually don't uh, combine the modeling results with each other. But but we combine like modeling results with uh, census data to calculate exposure. Like uh, to the humans, that, that, that's what you do usually. Anybody else? It was uh, very sophisticated. Ah. Isn't it? Okay. I have a question. Uh, is the beta missing included in your model or is it just the pollution from the source? No? This is uh, just, just those pollutions because it's uh, this local scale modeling and usually this, uh, this runs is uh, to check this uh, impact of the certain enterprises. Uh, but this is not, not, not this, uh, you mean like the regional background, beyond background, it is not included. Uh, but it's, it's uh, more relevant for, uh, for uh, calculations if we've done for uh, whole city or whole Estonia, then of course uh, we have to uh, take account, uh, also include uh, the background levels. Uh. But yes, uh, this, this service actually uh, enables to automatically uh, add a background figure from uh, some, uh, some pre uh, Pre-calculated uh, layer in our airware system. If we have, like, for example, like uh, PM2.5 or, or fine particulate matter, we have uh, run a model on the regional scale, and we have this uh, result uh, in airware. Then actually, it's possible to use this web service to like add this uh, background value to this, this uh, calculation. Uh, I have also one question. Okay. Um, <laughs> You have used uh, ArcGIS technology approximately 10 years, as yes. much as I remember. Uh, but um, how widely spread this, uh, the technology on the other departments? You mean exact your department, but uh, overall in your center? Yeah, we do use it, of course, but uh, mainly mm -hmm. to produce uh, nice looking maps. Uh. Mm -hmm. That's just the main. Uh, we, we, we haven't used a uh, lot of those uh, other possibilities which actually Arc is, uh, is offering. Uh. Mm -hmm. so more or less lack of knowledge uh, because uh, we are not uh, we are not uh, software developers or uh, mm -hmm. GIS people. We are chemists. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But we do use it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is that all? Okay. Or anybody Th else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh,